Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Professor Hall, and today we are talking about Nathaniel West. Um, this is the first of two lectures. Here we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, Nathaniel West's life and some of his other works that you're not reading for this class. And then in the next lecture, we'll get into The Day of the Locust. Um, which is a, a later book in terms of The Lost Generation. And sometimes Nathaniel West, because of when he was born and some of his experiences, is placed into the category of a modern writer in general and not kind of placed with the other Lost Generation writers. But I think that that's because his work has kind of been overlooked by history a little bit and by both critics and readers. And I think that his uh, his themes and his experimental style definitely places him within our our category for this course. So let's get into it. Nathaniel West was born Nathan Weinstein to Azakanazi Jewish parents who immigrated from Lithuania. So he uh, later changed his name because of the stigma around Jewish people. A lot of times it would be harder to do things like, for instance, he couldn't join a fraternity at college because he was Jewish. Um, so even uh, prior to World War II, even here in the United States, a lot of uh, racism against people who were of Jewish descent. Um, his parents did immigrate from Lithuania and then they set up a fairly successful company and this allowed him to have a, a, not exactly, uh, very wealthy lifestyle. He's not like one of the 1%, but he's, he's living a very comfortable life and certainly would have been thought of, uh, as at least upper middle class, if not, uh, if not upper class in terms of when he grew up. So he basically, I think his life is, and there is a, uh, a book that has been written about the life of Nathaniel West, as well as his wife called Lonely Hearts, which is taking a cue from his second book. But, um, he's kind of an interesting character, you know, living in the, the roaring twenties as it was, he gets this nickname uh, Pep because he's quite lazy <laughs> and basically just kind of living off the family money. Um, he goes to school. He's kicked out for his grades. He then takes the transcripts of his cousin, also Nathan Weinstein, so same name, and uh, gets into Brown University using his cousin's transcripts. So uh, a little bit of shadiness going on there after he was kicked out of college the first time. Um, and he graduates, but like barely. <laughs> kind of by the skin of his teeth. He's certainly not making honor roll or anything like that. Again, kind of like a trust fund kid, right? He's working for his dad. He becomes an expatriate for a time, um, goes to Paris for two years. And when his father's business kind of takes a hit just a little before the Great Depression in 1929, uh, there was a little bit of a dip in 1927 and, and his, his family business is kind of hit. So he's called to come back home. And when he does that, he uh, has been hanging out in Paris among the elites and with, you know, some of the writers who were there at the time. Um, he is the brother-in-law of a humorist who writes for The New Yorker um, and later uh, who's, uh, the man who married Nathaniel West's sister. And then later he is also the brother-in-law to uh, a woman who wrote this book, um, my sister Eileen, and uh, she was a humorist as well. So he becomes friends with other writers, Dashiell Hammett, Lillian Hellman, F. Scott Fitzgerald. These are kind of the circles that he's running around in. And when he comes home, he begins managing hotels. He is uh, in New York City with these fashionable literary circle people that we've been talking about throughout this course, um, particularly good friends with F. Scott Fitzgerald and his uh, mistress after he separated from Zelda Fitzgerald when she was 
uh, hospitalized, which we, we discussed before for mental illness. So in managing these hotels, he starts coming across these kind of seedy characters, people who are part of the underbelly, prostitutes, petty criminals, um, those kind of things. And he, his first book that he puts out is The Dream Life of Balso Snell in 1931. It's this very odd story about a man who uh, finds the Trojan horse, uh, climbs in through the backside and kind of wanders around this Trojan horse while having these dreams and fantasies. And it was not received well by critics or by readers, uh, it, it was a little bit too experimental. That's in 1931. In 1933, he publishes Miss Lonely Hearts. And this is kind of known as West's New York book. It's a little bit noir. It's uh, very dark. And it's trying to show um, the seedy underbelly of New York. In the 1920s and 30s, you know, particularly if you watch movies from that time, like RKO Pictures with Shirley Temple or Fred Astaire, um, New York is the place to be, right? There's a song a little bit later. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Bright lights, big city, all of that kind of thing. Well, his book is about a man who works for a newspaper who is answering these Lonely Hearts ads. So people write in, it's kind of like Dear Abby. Uh, in Britain, I think they call it an agony ant column, which I think is like such a great name for it. Um, but yeah, Ann Landers or Dear Abby, um, who were sisters, by the way. Um, so it's, a, it's an advice column kind of like that. Um, and he wrote this book about a man who is sort of lost and he's getting quite depressed and he has a loss of faith. He sees this, um, all of these people writing in with their problems and they don't know who to turn to. And he kind of develops this complex, like he can help anybody and he should have all the answers. Um, and eventually has a, a love affair that, that leads to his demise. Now, sometimes people say that this is based on the true story of the Lonely Hearts killers. Um, that, much like the Craigslist killer, was uh, an event in which a man and a woman were placing ads um, in uh, newspapers and then killing the people who answered those ads, or at least in, at least it seems to be that way. So that actually happened in the 1940s. So if you have somebody who says that this book was inspired by a true story, no, it was not. <laughs> It was written nine years before the incidents took place. There are uh, there's a movie called Lonely Hearts or Miss Lonely Hearts, I think, that uh, is based on that story rather than uh, Nathaniel uh, West's book. But at any rate, around this time, he goes to California to to make his money in screenwriting. We've had a number of other people do that, notably F. Scott Fitzgerald, who uh, was not quite as successful. People didn't, his work didn't really translate to the screen. But Nathaniel West d does okay. He actually makes a, a pretty good living doing this. And um, again, he seemed kind of bitter about it. And the things that he was writing to other people, the fragments and scraps of letters and things like that that we have, he said, basically, I'm writing C pictures um, for people who don't care. It's just a money-making machine. This is not about art. This is not about craft. Um, but at the same time, uh, Pep is a little as we, we've noted, right? So... He just kind of keeps going along with this, becoming more and more jaded. Uh, in 1935, he wrote this book called Cool Million. So that is his third novel. And that is meant to be like a twist on the American dream and showing that the American dream is just nonsense and that people uh, can't just make it today, that um, that kind of thing. So because of that, it, it has been bought by a studio. Nobody's ever made it into a movie. And it was received a little bit better than his other books. But at the same time, 
Um, most people at that point in time, at least, did not want to read about the lie of the American dream. We're in the middle of the Great Depression. We're heading toward World War II. So things are starting on the world stage, even though the United States isn't involved in it yet. Um, the, the world is, is becoming, uh, the tensions are kind of broiling up so to speak. So we have fascists coming to power and that kind of thing. And um, I don't know. I think if it were published today, I could see somebody picking that up because we have a lot darker storytelling, especially uh, in our in our media. So if you think of like something on HBO or Netflix that a short term series that's um, got quite dark tones, I could definitely uh, see that happening. And then in 1939, um, two things happen. First, he writes Day of the Locust, which is the book we're going to talk about uh, next in, the, in our next video. But because he's had these experiences um, in New York and then later on in L.A. with like prostitutes, petty criminals, stuntmen, um, writers trying to make it, actors and actresses who cannot act, um, but we're pretty in their hometown, right? LA is kind of the the city where people go if they're like the prettiest person in their hometown. And then they go to LA and then they're told that they're ugly and they're too fat and they can't be in pictures and they can't act. Um, that's very often what happens. And set designers and all of this kind of thing. People who are either behind the scenes of these huge movies, or they are trying to work their way up in some way. And so while Miss Lonely Hearts is kind of showing the underbelly of New York, Day of the Locust is doing the same for Los Angeles. And some people have now called it uh, Nathaniel West's, like, the greatest book about Hollywood ever written. It was made into a movie. I feel... Uh, the the book we're going to talk later more about the style but Nathaniel West wrote with this very expressionistic style we've talked about how in the lost generation they're writing subjectively so that you can kind of put your psychology your experiences into what you're reading and a lot of symbolism things that um, are meant to be a little bit looser symbols where they're open for interpretation. They mean something, but exactly what might be hard to pin down. Um, the realism of the past, where we're trying to depict life exactly as it is and, and having a little bit of nostalgia there too, um, he's not interested in that. So if you have read, uh, if you're in this class, you have read Hemingway. If you're not, if you have read things by Hemingway, that's a little bit more realism uh, without the the regionalistic nostalgia from, from the past generations of writers. Fitzgerald kind of has a little bit of a combination, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and so did Zelda. A little bit of a combination of this realism with a little bit of expressionism. So if you read something like The Great Gatsby, for example, that's hard to make into a movie because um, so much of it is like dreamlike uh, and a little bit surrealist and expressive where um, it's all about the feeling rather than maybe the the exact events. So because of that, I find the movie version of Miss of Day of the Locust a little bit disappointing, I guess. Um, I think that they take the basic plot and then they show you a movie of that plot. But I don't feel like they capture fully the expressive style that West was kind of known for. Um, so, but that movie wasn't made till the 70s. But in 1939, he meets um, Eileen McKinney, whose sister Ruth wrote My Sister Eileen, um, a book that was kind of like, uh, I, I saw one critic call it a demure version of Sex in the City in the in the 1930s. It's about two sisters who go uh, from Ohio to New York trying to make it big. And one wants to be a writer, one wants to be an actress, and they meet kooky characters and and, um, and it's madcap adventures and and hilarious hilarious fun uh if you're reading it in the 1930s i don't know that it translates as well in terms of the humor for people today but 
At any rate, Eileen, um, interestingly enough, I think, has become kind of a footnote for her husband, uh, just that she was married to him, and for her sister that she inspired this book, My Sister Eileen. But Eileen McKinney was a an ink artist for the Walt Disney Company. So at that point, Walt Disney had put out... Um, Snow White and was a, was a growing, rising company, and she was part of that and doing some animation. And for a woman to be doing that, I think especially um, having that type of a career is quite um, interesting. So they meet and they marry in 1940. They seem to be quite similar to F. Scott Fitzgerald and his wife having kind of a tumultuous relationship where it's all madcap and it's all about parties and and drinking and having having a good time and having laughs. Um, And at the same time, he's quite disillusioned with life. It's this very interesting thing that we find over and over again with these Lost Generation writers that they keep sort of going after materialistic things and and being hedonists, meaning that they're they're chasing pleasure all the time. And then they're coming up and they're finding emptiness, that there's nothing at the end of that road, right? Um, There's nothing there for them ultimately. So my sister Eileen is picked up and made into a Broadway play. So they were going to adapt the uh, the book to become a play. Um, and then later on, in the, I think in the 1950s, they make it into a, a musical as well. And it's kind of a fun uh, movie. Um, probably better well known than some of West's stuff. Although he did write Five Came Back um, and a few other uh, movies. His brother-in-law wrote uh, for the Marx Brothers, wrote movies for the Marx Brothers because he was a humorist. And then his sister-in-law wrote this movie. And so he's kind of in the middle of these two family members finding more success, even though maybe he had a little more talent. At least he might have thought so. So at any rate, uh, two things happen in 1940. The first is that this play gets picked up into a movie at, or into a Broadway play rather. And so uh, Nathaniel West and his wife were going to go and see the play. Um, the second thing that happens that sort of changes their plans is that F. Scott Fitzgerald died. And so they cut short a hunting trip that they're on in Mexico to drive up first for the funeral and then for the play. And while they're driving up, um, he runs a stop sign and they are both killed. Now, there has been some speculation about this. It just seems to me, I don't think exactly that that was intentional. Um, We do have a number of authors and artists from this time period who are um, ending their lives intentionally. I don't think that it was intentional. It does not seem that way from anything that uh, they left behind in their letters or from what people said about them. Um, It seems more like the two of them really were reckless and this is the kind of thing that they would do. Uh, We're driving from Mexico to California. Let's just go as fast as we can and not pay attention to the rules and not care. And so... Um, we are left from Nathaniel West with four novels. Um, and he, again, was kind of bitter about that, too. He said that his novels he thought were good, but the literary circles hated him. He's writing things that are kind of exposing them in a way that they weren't exposing themselves, even in these kind of mixtures of biography and fiction that they're doing. He's exposing things that people don't want to be seen and showing um, beyond the beautiful gold, shiny veneer, what's underneath that. Um, So he uh, had a different publisher for each one of his books, which was kind of unusual at the time. None of them had particular critical praise except um, for the the Day the Locust and a little bit with Miss Lonely Hearts. But really, 
they didn't find a huge readership, I think, until much later when people began to study this time period and reread uh, this book in particular, The Day of the Locust, and, and say, wow, he really somehow captures not just the time period and what Los Angeles and Hollywood was like, but a side of Los Angeles that we don't normally see that I think is still there today. So a lot of people in reading this book, there are parts that are very dated and it's very apparent that he wrote it in 1939. And there are other parts that I think feel like you could easily adapt it to take place today. I think that you could very, very easily adapt it and and the kind of setup would be very similar. So that's what we're left with, just four books that uh, were kind of lost to to both critics and readers and and then rediscovered a little bit later on. And, And now we're going to study and talk about them. So I can't wait to do that and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, everybody.